Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Damian Williams, and I'm the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. I'm joined today by DEA New York Special Agent in Charge, Frank Tarantino. I'm here to announce federal charges in a case that has shocked the conscience of the city, already reeling from the devastating effects of the fentanyl epidemic. On September 15th, four innocent babies were poisoned by fentanyl at a daycare center in the Bronx. One of those babies has died. The defendant's alleged conduct that led to those poisonings is unconscionable. It's inexcusable. And it's the reason that they're now in federal custody, facing federal charges that carry a maximum sentence of life in prison and a minimum sentence of 20 years in prison. I have made addressing the fentanyl epidemic a top priority of my time as U.S. Attorney here. We brought cases against the targets and cartels in Mexico that manufacture fentanyl, against individuals and companies in China that supply the cartels with precursor chemicals needed to make this poison. And we brought cases against the traffickers who move the fentanyl through our streets. But this case is different. We allege that the defendants poisoned four babies and killed one of them because they were running a drug operation from a daycare center. A daycare center. A place where children should be kept safe, not surrounded by a drug that could kill them in an instant. Here are some of the facts that we allege in our federal complaint. We allege that two defendants, Defendant Mendez and Defendant Acevedo Brito, along with their co-conspirators, ran a fentanyl distribution business out of a daycare center in the Bronx. At approximately 2.40 p.m. on Friday, September 15th, Mendez, who operated the daycare, called 911 to report that three children in her care required medical attention. And a fourth child, who was picked up by parents earlier in the day, was also taken to the hospital. Three children were given Narcan to counter the effects of the opioid poisoning. And one child, a one-year-old baby boy, was pronounced dead. When law enforcement officers searched the daycare, they found a large quantity of fentanyl and machinery used to press and package narcotics for distribution. And in particular, they found a brick of fentanyl, about one kilogram in weight, right on top of children's play mats in the daycare's closet. As alleged in the complaint, before emergency personnel arrived at the daycare, before they arrived, Mendez and a co-conspirator tried to cover up what happened. Seconds before Mendez called 911, she called a co-conspirator. Minutes later, a co-conspirator arrived at the daycare. Minutes later, he left the daycare and fled out the back alley, carrying two full shopping bags. And all of that happened while the children, the babies, were suffering from the effects of fentanyl poisoning and in desperate need of help. We immediately launched a federal investigation, and we've been working around the clock to uncover the truth and we're now ready to bring these defendants to justice. This is a tragedy, and my heart breaks for the children and their families, but I promise you this, we're gonna keep fighting for justice, in this case and in every other case involving this deadly poison. The people of this great city deserve nothing less. And I also have a message for anyone out there who was selling fentanyl. Stop pushing this poison, it kills, it ruins lives, and it will ruin yours too when we catch you, convict you, and send you to federal prison. Now, we could not have brought this case without the dedication and assistance of our partners at the DEA, the NYPD, and the entire OCDF New York Strike Force. And I also want to thank the SDNY Digital Forensics Unit and the complex analytical and social media en en enhancement team at the New York, New Jersey HIDA. I also want to thank the Bronx District Attorney's Office, and in particular, my friend Darcel Clark, the DA, who has also filed state charges against these defendants. We will continue to coordinate with her office as this case proceeds. And finally, I want to thank the career prosecutors of my office handling this case, Brandon Thompson and Maggie Lanam, as well as Matthew Hellman and Kyle Worshba, the chiefs of the Narcotics Unit. And I want to turn the podium over to Frank Tarantino from the DEA. Good afternoon. My name is Frank Tarantino. I'm the special agent in charge of the DEA New York Division. In my 32 years of government service, 
25 of which have been spent serving with the DEA. There is no more devastating news or tragedy than the loss of a child. And every New Yorker should be outraged by this senseless tragedy. Unfortunately, the victim's family joins a long list of hundreds of thousands of grieving Americans who have lost a loved one, 110,684 to be exact, as a result of drug poisoning. Fentanyl is a killer. Fentanyl crept into our illicit drug supply like a cancer, slowly and deceptively, and is now in everything and everywhere, killing victims instantly and indiscriminately. Fentanyl is the most urgent threat in our nation. And the tragedy that unfolded in the Bronx at the Danino Nino Daycare Center demonstrates the danger that fentanyl poses to every New Yorker. As this investigation continues, I want to reiterate DEA's commitment to holding those predatory criminals accountable for trafficking this poison throughout our communities. I commend the work of our investigators from the DEA Strike Force, the NYPD, and our partners at the Southern District of New York and the Bronx District Attorney's Office who work tirelessly every single day to stop drug poisonings from taking too many lives too soon. This is not a war on drugs. This is a fight to save lives. Thank you. Be happy to take some questions. Uh, why is he not charged, and what, what is his status? So we're not done. Um, let me just put it that way. I think you should just um, uh, look out for more on that soon. Next question. How confident are you that investigators will locate that co-conspirator? We're not going to give up. We're not going to. We're going to get him. Next question. Next. Either Mendez or the co the co-defendant or the husband on the DEA's radar. Is this a location that you had been familiar with previously? So I'm not going to be able to speak to any kind of broader connections. Um, it's fair to say that this is uh, something that we're going to run to ground and make sure that um, the case doesn't stop here. Those drugs came from somewhere. Um, we're going to make sure that we uh, we get it all the way back to the source. And Damien, what does it say about what is this case? that, as you say, shocked the conscience of the, of the city, say about where we are with fentanyl and, and what it's doing to the community? Look, I've been clear that this is not only a law enforcement crisis, but it's a public health crisis. You know, fentanyl, um, a tiny amount, um, almost imperceptible to the eye, can kill an adult. And so imagine what it can do to the body of a little baby, right? That's what we're seeing right now. And so there's no need to panic However, it's a crisis, and all tools that we have at our disposal need to be brought to bear. That's why I talked about uh, not only targeting the cartels in Mexico and the folks who supply the precursor chemicals in China, but also making sure that we don't take our eye off the ball on Main Street, right, in the corners of, of our city where the most vulnerable people live um, and can be harmed by this drug. Next question. Um, can you tell us if you think there's any connection with, that they had with existing cartels that have been under surveillance or recently prosecuted? So I'm not able to speak to, um, to again, to um, connections that we're, that we're looking to draw. Um, you know, that is a subject of investigation. Next question. Um, so you, the kilo of fentanyl that was discovered on a placemat, was that the same placemats that children were napping on? And is that how they were exposed? Or was it possibly a different exposure? It's a great question. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to speak to that. That's outside the four corners of our of our charging document. Was it in a closet, the play mat? Again, I'll just refer you back to my last answer. Matthew Lee, any sort of trust? I guess I, I just want to confirm that you're going to be seeking a remand of these two. And I wanted to know if, if you find the people further up that supplied the fentanyl, can they be charged in connection with the death uh, in the view of your office? 
So I'm not going to speculate on the on the back end of the question, but um, with regard to whether we're going to be seeking detention, the answer is yes. Yes, is it clear if the daycare center was set up expressly for the purpose of hiding the operation, or did the op the drug operation come after the formation of it? If it's clear yet, I'm not. I'm unfortunately not able to 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 speak to that. Uh, can you say, either of you can say where the geographic source of the, the fentanyl was? Was it uh, uh, Mexico, uh, the Far East, or other points uh, in the hemisphere? And uh, uh, how reckless was it to have that stuff near where these children would be reposed? So look, I, let, me, let, me, let me address what you asked at the, at the, at the end. Um, I'm a lawyer. Right. I'm the United States attorney here, but I'm a father. And I'm sure many of you are parents too. And common sense dictates that when you drop off your baby, you expect the baby to be kept safe. And so I don't think there's any other way to look at it other than it being incredibly reckless, one of the most reckless things that a human can do to endanger the life of a child like that. That's why we're here. Thank you, everyone.